Okay, so this video will be very similar to the last one. The difference being is now we're going to throw in some parentheses where we have to use the distributive property. Remember that we just had parentheses in the last video. We don't always use the distributive property. Just because there's parentheses does not mean you should distribute. We only distribute if we can't combine what's inside of the parentheses. For example, if I have 8 plus 2 in parentheses, I'm going to do it. If I have 8 plus x in parentheses, I can't do that. Those would be considered um, unlike terms. We only, um, it, it's when it's unlike terms that we can't combine what's in the parentheses. Um, remember, like terms mean you have the exact same variable part. So x and 3x would be like terms. x squared and x squared would be like terms. 5x and 5x squared would not be like terms. Um, so let's go ahead and let's look at these two examples that I have here. So in example one, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try my PEMDAS and I'm going to see if there's anything I can do with order of operations. Because whenever I have an algebraic expression, that's where I want to go. I know it's an algebraic expression because there is no um, equal sign. So I'm looking here and I see that I can do 2 minus 7. 2 minus 7 is negative 5. I cannot do x plus 2. They are not like terms. And then looking inside these brackets here, I can do negative 2 divided by 6. I can rewrite that as a fraction. So doing that, I'm going to have 3x minus 4. 2 minus 7 is negative 5. Minus 14 times x plus 2. Plus, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a little scratch work here so I can write it in its simplified form. Negative 2 over 6 can both be reduced by 2, so I'm going to say that that's negative 1 third squared. Okay, I did my parentheses. Um, so these parentheses that are causing me problems, that's where I'm going to use the distributive property. I'm going to take the negative 14 and I'm going to distribute it in using multiplication to both the x and the 2. I'm also going to go ahead and do that one exponent at the same time, giving me 3x um, I'm actually going to go ahead and multiply this. Negative 4 times negative 5 is plus 20. So I just did that. Now I'm distributing that in. Minus 14x. Minus 14 because sine belongs to the number times 2 is minus 28. Plus negative 1 third squared. Both the top and the bottom of the fraction, both the numerator and denominator, get squared. So negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. 3 times 3 is uh, 9, so I get plus 1 9. So now all I'm going to go ahead and do is combine like terms. So 3x and negative 14x are like terms. Signs are different, so I subtract. 14 minus 3 is 11. I keep the sign of the bigger number, the 14, which was negative. I get negative 11x. And then I'm going to go ahead and combine these three terms. I'm going to start by just combining the 20 and the negative 28. And then I'm going to get a common denominator and add it to the 1 9th. So doing that, 20 and negative 28 is a negative 8 plus 1 over 9. I know that that's the same thing as 8 over 1. I also know I need a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom here by 9. Giving me, I'm going to write it over here because I never have enough room, negative 11x minus 72 over 9 plus 1 over 9. Oh, that's terrible. My work is awful. Please do not, please have better work than, my, than me. Um, so then that gives me negative 72 over 9 plus 1 over 9. Signs are different. I subtract and get 71. I keep the sign of the 72 since it was bigger. So I get a negative, oops, I don't know why I wrote that. I was thinking of fractions, so I wrote my negative 11. Let me start that over. So I get negative 11x minus 71 over 9. And that is my final answer. Remember from the last video, I said we need to be able to be comfortable with getting an expression. We don't always simplify it down to a nice number. So the simplified form of my given expression is negative 11x minus 71 over 9. Go ahead and look at an example two. Again, maybe you might want to pause this and try it on your own first. Hey, okay, now they had a chance to try it. Again, I'm going to start with my PEMDAS. I notice that my parentheses, the only parentheses I have are ones that I cannot combine what's inside. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute. I'm going to distribute a negative 3x in, and then I'm going to distribute the minus in. So starting by distributing the minus 3x in, I get 2x squared 
minus 12x minus 3x squared, x times x is x squared, dropping down this minus 5x squared, and then I'm taking the minus because it's a negative that's directly in front of the front of this parenthesis set, and I'm distributing that in. Minus x plus 3. Plus is kind of hard to read. I don't know if I made that better or worse. Um, from here, I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms. Remember, like terms have to have the exact same variable part. So I see I have a 2x squared, a negative 3x squared, and a negative 5x squared. So I'm going to go ahead and put those together. Well, 2 minus 3 is going to give me a negative 1. Minus 5 is going to give me a negative 6x squared. Um, I also have a negative 12x and a negative x as like terms, giving me negative 13x. And then finally I have a plus 3 that doesn't have any like terms. And again, that's the best I can do. That's my most simplified version. So big thing on this, if you can do what's inside the parentheses, do it. If you can't, use the distributive property to help you finish getting rid of your parentheses so you can continue on through your order of operations.